Hi everyone, for today's quick video I'm going to show you how I created this card front design in Canva and then I just printed it through my regular HP printer, mounted it onto some black card and then put it onto a, a DL, you know, long card. So this whole design that you can see here, the happy and the birthday was all done in Canva. So if you want to know how I did it, keep watching. Okay, so, so to create the card that I've just shown you, I used Canva and it's here, C-A-N-V-A. So it's canva.com. So if you already have a Canva account, just go to your Canva account and follow along. If you don't have one, just go to canva.com and register it's perfectly free now i use the free version and you can pay for canva but in my canva playlist on my youtube channel everything that is in there including today's video is all made in the free version i don't pay for it at all so the first thing i'm going to do just to give me an idea of size of of what I'm actually working with for this card that I wanted to make. I'm going to go over here where it says custom size. So I'm, I'm on the home page of Canva, custom size. In the width and height, I'm going to put in my measurements. Now I've already got them in because obviously I've used this size before, but I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the pixel box to inches because that's how I prefer to work. And here in the UK, our A4 cardstock is 8.25 inches wide and it's 11.75 high. Now, if you use 8.5 by 11, you put those measurements in there. I'm going to say create new design and that's going to put an 8.25 by 11.75 piece of virtual cardstock, if you like, on my desktop. So I'm just going to slide the slider up a little bit just to make it a bit bigger. This is only a visual representation for my piece of card that I'm going to print on. Okay, you don't need to do this. You could do it in 12 by 12. You could do it in 8.5 by 8.5. It's entirely up to you. But because I'm printing on A4 cardstock, I, for me, it was just easier to work with this size piece of virtual card here on screen in Canva. My idea is that I'm going to get a piece of card, as you will have seen at the beginning, in blue, and I'm going to cut the width down to 8.25. So that's going to give me, in the end, a piece of blue card that's 8.25 by 8.25. I'm going to score it in the middle at 4 and 1 eighth, and that's going to be my top folding or tenth fold style base card, if you like. And then I'm going to put the design that I create here in Canva on the front of it. And I'm going to mat it onto, as you saw, a piece of black card. So as I said, this is just a visual. So the first thing I'm going to do, first of all, you need to be under elements. You may see things in here already. If you're new to Canva, there may be nothing in here. But if you click left click in the search box here at the top, it normally brings up this box and browse categories. I'll show you in a minute how you can get to these in other ways. But the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come to frames. So I'm going to select frames and then that will bring up all these frames. And it says here like see all, you can see all the shapes. I'm just going to go back because what I want to do, I want the letter frames. So as I say, if you look through here, there's loads and loads and loads of different frames in all different shapes, sizes, you know, orientations, everything. But I want the letter frames. So we're under letters. I'm going to uh, left click where it says see all, and that will then bring all the letters on view for me that I want to use. So I want to... Um, create the word happy and have each letter in different colors. So I'm going to select the H and that's going to drop it on screen. Then the A, then I'm going to do a P and a P and a Y. 
and they're all just dropping on top of each other at the moment. So I'm going to left click anywhere in an empty space on the page to deselect. I'm going to select them all by dragging an imaginary box around them and I'm just going to drag a corner and just shrink them down for now by eye and then I'm just going to separate each one so that I can see them all individually and then I can resize them all again at the end but for now this is what I'm going to you know work with I'm just going to try and zoom in a little bit more so I'm going to line them up and what I'm going to do as I bring the H over to the H you'll see a pink dash line appearing along the top here and that shows that my <clears throat> letter A that I've got selected in, and I know it's selected because there's a bounding box around it is kind of locked in height to that H if that makes sense so now when I click off I get the four dots and the four little bars and that means that I can adjust this proportionately by dragging a dot or I can adjust the width and height independently by dragging these bars so a bit like we can do in canvas workspace if you are a follower of follower of mine for the scan and cut so i'm just going to drag this down until that pink dotted line appears again so that i know it's the same height as the h and i'm going to do exactly the same with the other letters now it might be that you know this looks as though it's the exact um right height i'm just going to move this over ever so slightly and the y is lined up at the top but it's not the same height so there i've got them all at the same height now so i'm going to select them all and then i'm just going to shrink them down just to work with them a bit easier so i've got my h a p p y and they're all at the same height so now i want to color them in so I'm going to select the first one. Now you can, I've, I have shown in, I think it was in a YouTube live I did, or oh, probably maybe two years ago, I did show you that you can drop photographs or designs into these, but today I'm just going to colour them. So I'm going to select the H, and you'll see at the top here, there's um, like a greyed out box with a red line through, which means there's no colour in this at all. So I'm going to click on the colour swatch, I'm going to scroll down and I'm just going to come to the colours and basically what I did, I did mine in shades of blue. I've not got the card directly in front of me at the moment so I don't know the exact order but I'll just fill them with colour. So I'm going to select this blue and now that's filled the H in with blue. I'm going to select the A and I'm going to make that a paler blue then I'm going to select the P and click the dark blue and then I'm going to come back to that other blue again and then that one so each letter now has been filled with a color what I also did um, again you don't have to do this but I just thought it might make it look a little bit interesting I outlined each letter with a line I actually used a dotted line um, I'm not sure whether you'll see it in the photograph or not, but again, this is how I did it. So I selected the H. Next to the colour swatch, you can see the border style. So I selected the border style, and it's saying at the moment there's no border. I came over here to the dotty border, and in the border weight, I just moved the slider down, and I think I did mine at two, and then clicked away. So now if I zoom in, you'll see I've got a dotty border all around my design. So I'm on the border. You can see I've got the border selected. And when I click on it, you can see it's black. But if you wanted it green, I could change it to green. But I left mine on black. Let me come back out. So I, I'll go to the next letter. I'll go back to the border. I added the dotty border, the border weight was two, and I left it on black. Again, if you want to change it, click on the border style and choose a colour. Or if there's a colour here that you that you don't like, go to the rainbow colour swatch. 
that will bring up all the colors you can slide through you know if you want a gold border and then you want to change it to gold you just move this circle and you'll see it will go to gold but I'm just going to leave mine on black I'm going to go to the next one do exactly the same choose the dots and I'm just going to do that for each of the letters so a, a size two dotty border you could do it as one you could do it more however you want to do it but let me just zoom back out a bit now so I've got my happy okay so for now I'm just going to drag an imaginary box around everything and this box appears and I'm going to choose group and I'm just going to group them okay so how to do the cutout so now I'm going to come back to elements and then this time I want to choose shapes so before where I showed you how you can just click search and come in here and choose shapes what I can do if I go to elements some shapes will appear but like I say it may be because I've been using Canva for years and you know it may be that I've used these shapes before or it may be that you know some shapes do show up it's entirely up to you how you get to it again if I click where it says shapes if I click see all it will bring all these shapes up so basically I just want a square or a rectangle so I'm going to choose this square and then I'm going to again you get the dots and the bars I'm going to shrink this down and I'm going to stretch it out and then you can see this kind of like north south east and west icon at the bottom that helps you move it around I'm just going to position it just under the letter at the moment so it slightly overlaps on either side just ever so slightly and you can see it's coming as blue so what I want to do I want to come up to the with that selected I want to come up to the color swatch at the top and I'm going to change it to white and then I'm going to use that icon at the bottom to position it across the middle of my word and then I'm just going to squash it down a little bit more again you play with this you you know do it how you want to do it I'll zoom in a bit more so you can see it so when I click off now it looks as though I've split that word in half again a bit like if you follow me for the scan and cut you know if we slice something out of it but I haven't I've just put a white box over the top of it basically now again if you want to outline that box you can come back up to your line style you can choose um, the dots again and make it two so it matches everything else or you could leave it without the dots you know it's entirely up to you what you want to do with it dots I think I added the dots in for definition if you can hear Eddie in the background he is literally just walking around grumbling because he can hear things out on the lane I live on a very quiet lane so basically any little noise he hears he either grumbles at or he will bark at he's just like a grumpy old man he's um he's just over two but you would think he was, you know, 62, the way he carries on sometimes. So I will apologise in case he interrupts with a grumble or a bark. So that's what we've got now. So basically, all as I did from here, I went over to the left, to the text icon, and I just grab, uh, clicked on where it says add a heading. You can use add a subheading. It just brings on the word smaller, but I'm going to resize them in a minute anyway. So I'm just going to drag these down. I'm going to double click on the word to highlight it. And I'm going to type the word birthday all in uppercase. And then I'm going to come up to the font, which has come on as the default font. And I'm going to choose Anton. Now, again, this is probably here like it says because it says recently used if you don't have anything recently used if you're you know new to canva you can just scroll down and find all the fonts anything with a crown against it is part of the 
subscription or paid for feature. Basically, you can either subscribe to Canva and pay a monthly fee to get all the you know options that are available, or you could choose a font like this and use it, but before you're able to download it, you would have to pay for it. And you know, it might be in the UK, it might be like 50p or 99p or something like that. I, as I say, I just use all the free, the free version and all the free options. So I'm going to choose Anton and change the word birthday to Anton. And then I'm going to make it smaller and I'm going to put it in the middle of this white bar. Now, I'm not sure how well I'll try and zoom in, but as if I click off and click off, as I'm moving it, you'll see pink vertical and horizontal dash lines. That means that the word birthday is now centered vertically and horizontally to this white rectangle. Can you see them appearing? You can see the vertical. Look, there's nothing there now. As I get near to the middle and then move it up, you'll see them appear. So that's centered to the white rectangle. And then from here, I decided to add some stars. Again, you can either click in the search box and I'll clear the search. You need to be on element. Let's just go back and that will bring this up again or you can just type something in. So I typed star and hit enter and again it's under, it will bring you, you know anything that's a star. So either shapes or graphics or photographs of stars or frames of stars. I can't actually remember which one I chose, but I'm just under shapes. I'm going to say see all. And for now, I'm just going to select this first one. I don't actually think I use that. And I'm just going to choose this star. I'm going to shrink it down by dragging a corner. And then I'm going to bring it up here and sh I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to shrink it down a bit more because I want it to fit in this white thin rectangle. And then with it selected, I'm going to come up to the color and I'm just going to make it black. And I think I put three on, on either side. So with it selected, you'll see this little box appears and you can either you know, send it to the rubbish if you decide you don't want to want uh, want to use it. You can click on the three dots and there's all sorts of things there that you can do with it. I'm just going to duplicate it. So I'm going to click on where it says duplicate. And then again, I'm just going to position that one. And again, I can see it's lining itself up horizontally with the other one. And then I'm going to make another duplicate. And because I've positioned this one here and I've centered it, when I click duplicate, it spaces it out evenly, which is a good feature of Canva. So now with that one selected, I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard, which is the up arrow on a Mac, and I'm going to select the other two. Again, I'm going to click duplicate, and then I'm just going to bring them three over and just position them like so. And again, as I move them, you'll see the bar appear to, to tell me that it's horizontally positioned and then you'll see the numbers appear and that means that it's e evenly spaced with the ones that I copied from the left so now I'm going to let go and when I click away I've got the three stars so again if I come back so you can see it all so from here basically all as I did with this just to give me an idea of how to size it and cut round it I went back to the shape I'm going to um, delete the word star in the top, which will bring all the shapes. I'm going to drag another rectangle onto my desktop. I'm going to make it white and I'm going to put a border around it just so I can see it. And I'm going to leave the border as four because it's it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to use it at the moment, but I did this just for sizing. So if I click off, you can see I've got this rectangle. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these elements and group them just to make it a group for now so they don't move. I'm going to position this white box over my letters. And with this white box selected, I'm going to go to position, which is up here on the far right. And I'm going to say send it to the back. And then now I'm going to grab this bar and I'm going to stretch it out just so it's behind my other grouped word. And again, if I move it, you'll see the dots appear to show me it's centered vertically and horizontal. So now I'm going to select everything. And if I drag a corner in or out, you'll see a black box appears with white letters. And that's telling me the the size of this design so at the moment i've stopped I've, i'm still holding my left mouse key down and i'm holding on this circle in the corner <coughs> and it's telling me that it's seven inches wide by two and a half inches high i think i made the height of mine three inches so i'm going to let go so i'm going to drag it i can't remember what width i made it um but obviously I want it to fit on my card and I want to be able to mat it onto some black card. So I'm going to say seven and a half by two and a half, I think, for now. So I'm going to select it and I'm just going to choose the rectangle and I'm going to use this middle bar down here. And I'm going to drag it down until I see the height go to three inches. So now I'm at seven and a half inches wide by three inches high. Now I'm going to select, in fact, I can move that out of the way just so it's not confusing for you. Now I'm going to select this happy birthday and I'm going to ungroup it. And I'm going to hold, I'm going to select my first letter and I'm going to, again, using this bar, I'm going to drag it down until I get to three inches. And then I'm going to do the same with the next letter, drag it down. And if you remember from the beginning, when I get to the right height, it will kind of lock on to the other one. And then I'm going to select each of the letters by holding my shift key down. I'm going to group them and I'm going to click on the three dots and I'm going to lock them. That way I can't do anything with them. I can't move them or anything. So now I'm going to select my rectangle and all my stars and I'm going to drag this down as a group. Now again, you can position it wherever you want. It doesn't have to be central. If you want to see the definition of the A, for example, you know, you could put it down here. You could put it up there. I just kind of put mine central-ish. So that's how it's looking now. So I'm going to click on the word happy, which is locked, and click on unlock. So it's all unlocked. I'm going to group all this back together. And then with my black rectangle, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So basically what I did from here, um, I'm just going to make that rectangle a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to drag it up a little bit. So I selected everything, put it at the top of my page and I sent this to my printer and I printed this out with this black border but then I just used my paper trimmer and I just cut inside this black border on my white card that I'd printed on just to get rid of it. The black border was just a guide for me to know, you know, roughly if it's going to fit on my piece of base card which I know is this width of this white card if that makes sense so if I change this base card to um I used a blue so let's change it to blue and then just to give you an idea of what I'm, I'm trying to do I'm going to bring another rectangle on I'm going to fill this with black I'm going to go to position send it backwards and then I'm going to just position this behind so basically I just need to send it backwards again so my white layer lines up so basically what I, my intention was as I said at the beginning I was going to get a piece of A4 card which is eight and a quarter wide 
I was going to trim it down to eight and a quarter high, score it across the middle, which gave me my base card. Then I was going to layer up a piece of black card and my white printed design on top of that black card, if that makes sense. So the if I just get rid of that black now, so you know what I'm talking about, and I'll change the base card back to white. So this black line, you know, did doesn't need to be here. You don't even really need to print it if you don't want. But I just found, for me, it was easier to print it and then I could trim inside of it with my paper trimmer. Or you could put this into your scan and cut ask it to do an outline and use a negative outline to get your line to come within this black line and cut it and it would cut within this black line for you if that makes sense again i have shown how to do that but this kind of this rectangle here with the black border was is was just my guideline for me for sizing so from here, so I've got happy birthday, I've got all my stars. So from here now, what you can do, you can come up to file and then it says here, add a heading. You can click up on the pencil and you can call it, you know, happy birthday card front and then you can hit save and it will save it into your Canva projects, which I'll show you in a minute. You don't have to save it if you don't want. It's entirely up to you but what you do now is you go up to share and then you come down here to download and it automatically by default wants to download everything as a, a png an image but i want to print this on cardstock so i'm going to click on the arrow at the side and i'm going to come down here to where it says pdf print which it says is best for printing so I'm going to choose that, then choose download, and then it will drop into my downloads folder on my computer. Yours will go to wherever your downloads folder is on your computer. Okay, so if I just go to my downloads folder, here's my PDF that I've just saved. And then all as I did, I just double clicked to open that, which opens it, you know, in a document on my computer and then I just sent that to my printer I loaded my printer with a piece of cardstock and printed it okay so if you have finished with this now you can just close Canva down so I'm just going to close that and close that and say close and I'm just going to go back to Canva so if you want to go back to this design at a later date, you then just come back to Canva, click on home, and your recent designs will show up in this window somewhere. So here's my happy birthday card front I've just saved. So if I left click to open it, you'll see there's my card front. And if I select it and ungroup it, I can then come to the letter and if I decide I liked this design but I want to use completely different colours and, and print it again, I can then just come to each of these letters and then let's just say I want to choose, you know, oranges and greens. I can change the letters then to something completely different. So I hope you found that helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the box directly under the YouTube video. Or if you're watching this on my blog, there should be a facility to leave a comment under the video on my blog. And I'll try and answer any questions. And if you've got anything else you'd like to know how to do using the free version of Canva, just let me know. So that's it for today. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye for now.